Congressman Mike Pence of Indiana is the chair of the Republican House Conference and in that capacity is the third highest ranking member of the GOP in the House. Congressman Pence is serving his fifth term in Congress from the great state of Indiana. He joins us tonight from Capitol Hill. Congressman, nice to have you on the program, sir. Thank you, Travis. Glad to have you on. Let me start um, by sharing with you a quick story. I was on Meet the Press a few weeks ago uh, with my friend Joe Scarborough, as you know, former Republican member of the House. And I didn't get a chance to even make my argument before Joe jumped out first and said that Barack Obama, President Obama, doesn't need Republicans. He controls both houses uh, of Congress. All he's got to do is to rally his own troops. So respectfully, why am I even talking to you on health care? <laughs> well, I, I don't think it's so much that uh, the president um, does or doesn't need members of the Republican minority. I think, but the president does need the American people. And right now, I think the problem that Democrats on Capitol Hill have and the administration has uh, with their plan to launch a government-run insurance plan is that a majority of Americans uh, don't like the plan. I think uh, we all recognize we've got to achieve some form of health care reform that lowers the cost of health insurance, lowers the cost of health care, uh, but a government-run insurance plan, including a public option uh, that could cause millions of Americans to lose the insurance they have, I think is losing support among the American people and, and certainly is strongly opposed by Republicans. For those who take your view um, that the president is wrong about this, that the government ought not to be in the business of health care, I hear that point loud and clear. There is another side to this, though, which is uh, many Americans believe that your party are, is representing the obstructionist point of view. To those who think the Republican Party, since the president can't get any votes on this, basically, are being obstructionist, you say what to that? Well, I say, I, I, I think the purpose of the opposition is to oppose every time you do. Um, and whenever principle allows, the purpose of the opposition is, is to support measures and to work in a bipartisan way. And uh, in this measure, uh, there literally are over a half a dozen uh, Republican alternative bills that are, are clearly described on our uh, conference website, Tavis, at GOP gov uh, republicans have been bringing forward ideas to to on on issues like uh, uh, how do we deal with uh, the chronically uninsured working in this country how do we deal with pre-existing conditions uh, w our framework work of course does not include a, a a massive expansion of the federal government's role but we've offered alternatives in that regard and i i think americans understand that but i think also, uh, I, I think, I think the, the, as I said before, when principle demands, I do think the purpose of the opposition is to oppose. And when it comes to government-run insurance that could lead to a government takeover of health care in this country, uh, I think, I think uh, millions of Americans appreciate uh, the opposition that Republicans and, I want to add, some Democrats in Congress ha have uh, been providing. So pardon Congressman Pence, the naivete of the question, but why can't we get bipartisanship on this issue if everybody in America, even John McCain and Sarah Palin, when they ran, agreed that our health care system was broken and needed to be fixed? So if everybody in the country agrees that something is wrong with health care, uh, unless you are, again, your party deliberately being obstructionist and being difficult, or unless, as one of your colleagues said, you deliberately want to make this President Obama's Waterloo, why can't we then get bipartisanship on an issue that everybody seems to agree has got to be addressed? Well, uh, I, I, think it's, uh, I don't think it's a naive question. I think it's a, it's a critical question. It's a question we've really been asking as Republicans since the first of the year, Tavis. I mean, we passed the so-called stimulus bill, and, and no Republican proposals were included in that bill. Uh, the budget was developed without Republican input. The same with regard to the energy bill, the so-called cap-and-trade legislation. Uh, I, think, I think millions of Americans who've seen the way Congress has been bringing forward thousand-page bills the day before they're brought to the floor can see that, that we, we've really had a, a, a profound decline in deliberation on Capitol Hill. Now, why that's occurred, I, I can't really say. You'd have to check with the majority in Congress uh, for why that's the case. But I, I do believe millions of Americans would like us, uh, during these difficult economic times, to, to take a breath uh, and to uh, come back to the table and, and find some modest reforms that would really help working families have access to more affordable uh, health insurance without dramatically increasing the size of government or dramatically increasing the debt on our children and grandchildren. But the, again, th th we've not been afforded the opportunity to do that 
for most of this year, and uh, I think that is a frustration to the American people. If government doesn't get involved, um, and you certainly have every right to express your point of view as you have, and that's why I'm glad to have you on, if government does not get involved, tell me then how we have increased competition, which even Republicans believe on every other measure, that competition, uh, good old enterprise, um, is what allows for the American public to be better served. So if government isn't the, isn't, the, isn't the reason or the rationale or the engine that drives competition so that everybody else who's offering health care behaves uh, correctly, um, then how, how, do you, how do you get that competition that benefits all Americans? Right. Well, I think it's the right question. And it's one, another one of those uh, premises upon which uh, Republicans uh, and the administration strongly agree. We, we recognize uh, that for many states, Tavis, as you know, there's essentially a virtual monopoly where mm -hmm. there's just a handful of insurance options available for small business owners like mm -hmm my state back in Indiana. We absolutely need to bring competition into that system to drive down the cost and, and make health insurance more affordable. But w we don't believe that the answer is to bring the government in as a competitor. We believe it is, let's, let's allow the American people to purchase health insurance across state lines, to, to look all across these United States and find a health insurance plan for their small business, for their family, or for their family farm that makes the most sense for them, right now, uh, Hoosiers in my state, people watching all across the country know they can only purchase health insurance in their state with groups that have been formed in their state. Well, we believe that with things like association health plans, you could create nationwide insurance products that, uh, given the size of the risk pool, would, by definition, almost overnight be more affordable than what's available in most jurisdictions. That, that's the kind of competition we believe is the answer. We believe to the, to the extent that the president's calling for more competition, he's right. Uh, I, I just don't believe that, that the federal government uh, is, a, is an honest uh, and uh, uh, you know, a genuine competitor in the marketplace. You know, I've said before the, the the government competes with the private sector the way an alligator competes with a duck. It just consumes it. What we need is bring all 1,300 of those private health insurance companies that are relegated just to states today, allow them to create products for all Americans, and uh, and you just watch those costs come down. That's what I miss about being back home in Indiana, those good old Indiana colloquialisms, alligators and ducks. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate that. Uh, let, me, let me fast forward right quick. Maybe we'll get back. Um, whenever we get on the other side of this health care debate, assuming that one day we will, with a measure that either you will support or oppose, but at some point we're going to move on to another issue and hopefully for all Americans have something um, that is uh, legitimate reform come out of this debate. When that happens, on the other side, headed toward the midterm elections, they're one of two realities. If the Republicans hold firm and don't support the president, there is the hope, as I said at the top of the show, um, that you all will see a repeat of 1994. By standing firm, Republicans take back the House after being the minority party for some years now. Or the other side is that this whole strategy backfires on you. What's going to happen? Well, you know, I really believe it's, it's uh, the Republicans should not be thinking of calculations about the midterm elections. I think we just ought to dig in and do what is right for the American people. I mean, we understand that uh, we've got to do something to lower the cost of health insurance and lower the cost of health care. Uh, ultimately, even the Congressional Budget Office uh, has identified that the plans that are being moved through the Congress would actually not lower the cost of health care uh, in this country. And so w we need to dig in and, and do what's right. I think the midterm elections will be less about political posturing and more about whether or not the American people um, feel that Congress has gotten the message, not just on this issue, Tavis, but, you know, I was here in Washington for uh, that uh, uh, taxpayer march on Washington. I did town hall meetings all across eastern Indiana over the month of August. I've traveled the country. You know, the American people are frustrated um, with Washington, D.C., and frankly, with the political class in both parties that, in, that have seen, you know, runaway federal spending under Republican and Democrat administrations, borrowing, spending, bailouts, takeovers. And, uh, you know, if the American people feel like Washington's gotten the message, then that'll play itself out in the midterms. But mm -hmm. if Washington hasn't gotten the message by Election Day, it's usually the day they get it. So finally, then, back to uh, what I uh, referenced earlier, is it your sense, as we sit here and talk today, um, that whatever health care comes forth is going to come forth without Republican support? 
You know, I hope that's not the case, but uh, so far it has been, it has been frustrating. Uh, you know, we have seen uh, the Democrat majority uh, move forward uh, with, with the launching of a government-run insurance plan, including a public option. Uh, we've seen mandates, $800 billion in higher taxes, uh, and we've really seen a resistance uh, to any effort uh, uh, to uh, to you know reduce the size and scope of that proposal or or turn toward market based solutions but you know Tavis uh, you know uh, you've been a uh, covered Washington for a long time hope springs eternal out here and I think if uh, the millions of Americans who are looking in tonight will continue to let their voices be heard uh, uh, that anything's possible we might just yet come together and pass the kind of modest reforms that'll really be in the interest of uh, working families and small businesses. From your mouth to God's ears, he's the House Republican Conference Chair, Mike Pence of Indiana. Congressman, nice to have you on. Thanks for sharing your insights. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tavis.